Welcome back to Meaningful Conversations Live. My name is Beata and these conversations are with Beata. So here I am for everyone who do not know me or maybe you know me but not very well, please go to my website, beatalifecoaching.com or please come on this site and connect with me. Every Tuesday at noon, I'm coming to you with wonderful, beautiful souls and guests that are bringing their stories to brighten your day, to bring more joy, to uplift you and create more meaning in your life. Same today. I have, oh my goodness, I have amazing human, gorgeous person. And, you know, she is so talented and she said yes to my invitation. I am beyond, I don't know, heaven and, and earth that she is with me. Her name is Jo Davis. Welcome to the show. Hi, Beata. How are you doing? I'm so happy to be here. So happy to be here. There's a little bit of delay. I can kind of see on the other side, but I know that you can hear me. I'm just um, very honored to be here and excited to have a conversation with you. Hello, are we back? We're back. I knew. You oh my that. goodness, Angels, please help us to stay connected. <laughs> um, so again, Joe Davies. She is one of the most talented women I know. She is imp she's impacting thousands, millions of people around the world. Artist, uh, author, speaker, business owner, and this very intuitive person, Reiki master or practitioner. Please tell us more. So it's so funny to me because when you asked to, to have a conversation and let's connect, I was like, oh, and I was so excited because I instantly was like, oh, you're my people. Like, you know how when you connect with somebody and you automatically know that, oh, we're going to be great friends. This is going to be easy. Um, so I was really excited when you when you reached out. I, uh, I love your story. I love to the fact that, you know, we talked earlier, we talked about intuition and how, you know, both of us are on the same page where we because you coach people and you're coaching them, giving them very similar you know, encouragement and feedback about the fact that we are all wired to this intuitive link, you know, to our higher power, to our gut, to our purpose on this planet. And I think that um, we have a lot of the same beliefs. And I know that when you coach people, you're trying to help them connect with that too. Absolutely. And I, like you said, I think that's why we connected. We connected not just because I wanted you on my show, but we had this short conversation and right away, I was like, oh my gosh, she's touching my soul. I feel that that invisible energy <laughs> between you and me. And I think even I even mentioned that. But so I'm thankful for that. But I have a questions, a couple of questions yeah. to you. Are you ready? Go for it. Let's go. How about you people? Are you ready? Oh my gosh, bring your energy <laughs> here. Please ask questions. Do not hesitate to ask questions. I can see them and I will ask them for you. So let's start with, at the beginning with your story. Because you are amazing <clears throat> and highly gifted, intuitive person, I'm wondering how did you tap into your intuitive super, superpowers? And did you have any difficulties accepting that abilities? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Like, that's such a good question. Um, I think growing up, I always felt wired a little different. Um, I always felt like I was in a fishbowl. I always felt like I was sort of watching people going. I, I remember in high school going, why the hell are people just ugly to each other? Or why? You know, and I would see things happening and going, oh, this is what's coming next for that person. And I would know. And then the thing would happen and I would be like, that's creepy. How did I know that was going to happen? And it kept happening over and over and over again. And I remember in my, um, even as a kid, I had stomach issues. So I had like gastrointestinal problems, reflux, inflamed esophagus, hiatal hernia. Like I had gut problems. Well, where's your second brain? 
Where's your intuition? It's in your belly. It's not up here. It's not in this like, you know, logical space. It's in your gut. It's this guttural thing that's always nudging us and guiding us. And I can remember always having stomach problems. And now it makes complete sense because I was always sort of stuffing that away. I don't want to be different. I want to fit in. I don't want to be different. I want to fit in. And I always, and everybody's felt that. I mean, we all went to school and we're like, gosh, I feel like different from everybody else. And it's because we are, but this was something on such a deep, deep level that, you know, I almost felt like I was floating outside every experience, watching it and having this, this higher understanding of, well, this is happening and now this is going to happen. And just seeing all the puzzle pieces come together and having this, um, almost be able, almost being able to forecast people's lives. And I can remember relationships stepping away from people because I was like, yep, this is what's coming and I can't watch. And I would disconnect no. from friendships and because I was like, I can't watch. It's too hard to watch. It hurts too much. They're not getting it. And I wasn't the one showing up to fix it or change the situation. I was just knowing. And then, and then just being completely creeped out going, how do I know that? And then it happens. Um, so I ran from it for years. I mean, I had stomach issues till I was in my twenties, late twenties, you know, early thirties. And, um, I got very distracted, you know, going through a divorce, the job change. Um, I took up skydiving cause it made me feel alive and actually connected. Um, and it quieted my mind, if that makes any sense, but I you did know, skydiving I, as well. So I know what you feel. Yeah, it, it's the it's most so, yes. quiet. You're, Cause you can't think about nothing else. You're not thinking about moving your damn laundry. You're not thinking nothing. Right. So um, I ran from it for a long time. And then I actually had what I would consider a few psychically traumatic experiences, if that makes any sense that were, um, you know, things that happened that were really traumatic for me that, you know, just, there's no way to other, there's no way to explain it other than traumatic and I had to go okay look you know the universe gives us nudges and whispers all the time sort of guiding us on what we're supposed to be doing and where we're supposed to be and what relationships we're not supposed to be in and what jobs we're not supposed to be in and, and what jobs we are supposed to be in and you know all the time we're getting all this feedback from our higher consciousness and um finally I was just like I, I just can't ignore it anymore. I mean, it's just too many weird things happening. We'd have friends over for dinner. You know, my kids would have like a friend over for dinner and I'm staring in my pasta eating. And, you know, my oldest son's friend is over sitting, you know, a couple seats down from me talking about the fact that her father had passed away. And I had no idea, you know, I knew she was living with her grandmother, but I didn't realize it was because her father passed away. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm just eating my pasta. And all of a sudden I see like Fonzie in my head, the old, the old TV show, Fon you know, um, happy days. And I see Fonzie in my head with this like greasy rag in his back pocket. And, and I'm like, Hey, was your dad a mechanic? And the girl's like, yeah, I never told you that. And I was like, did he like motorcycles? Like, she's like, Oh yeah, he was a huge Harley man. And I'm like, and then I'm seeing like a tattoo and I'm like, did he have tattoo? Like I'm describing her dad. I mean, it was wow. just so, and this is what's interesting to me about it is that other people, this happens to all the time and they think, oh, that what a coincidence. No, <laughs> that's like, like we're all wired to get these downloads of information to connect us to other souls and, and to bring comfort to those around us. And it was just a, an interesting experience. That's just one of a hundred examples of, um, connecting with another person or connecting with another soul. And I don't consider myself a psychic medium. I, I consider myself to be a highly intuitive person. The only people that have called me psychic intuitives are other people. That's how other people have identified me. You have enough people over for dinner and these things keep happening. Eventually people are like, oh, this is what you are. And you're like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> but, but everybody wow. has these abilities. And I will go back to what you just said, but I want to highlight everyone, please listen what and tune in what Joe just said. She had this gift. She knew it. 
about that, but she was running away. What you are running away at the moment that you know that is happening? How about like also Joe said that uh, people were kind of looking different when she said, well, I have this feeling or she was saying something that, oh, oh I didn't tell you that. But So she wanted to be like others, not different. Why? Mm -hmm. Difference is what makes you you and that's why we have this beautiful creature up front of us today so i think you also said something important because especially with i know about women that we run away from stuff that we fear so like you said universe give you these nudges universe give you the signs you feel it in your body not even in your head because head is messing up with the stories Yes, but you feel it, feel it in your body. And I, you said, I always have these feelings in my stomach. But so you are in the wrong job. You are in the wrong relationship and you try to fix it no matter what. And it's not working and you are still stick to it. And any other, you know, uh, areas of your life that are just not working. Why you are still there and you have these feelings and you are still stubborn and stuck so can you reveal on that from your own experience and with your clients around the world what, what would you say to a person that is she knows he knows that this situation is not serving me anymore but the story attached to that the story that maybe i'm not enough maybe i cannot somebody said that i will never survive on my own or I don't have skills. What would you say to them that, yes, you can do it? So, so I have two points to that. The first one is that, and I actually did a post today that talks about it. If we could acknowledge the fact that we are divine co-creators in our life, that this life that we're in, we were a part of the plan before we ever even were born. Like we were a part of arm in arm with God, our higher power, whatever, arm in arm, coming up with a plan together about what our life is going to look like, what souls are going to show up to teach us forgiveness, to teach us love, to teach us um, how to step into our strength, to step into our power, to own our junk, to whatever it is, to hurt us, to love us, to lift us, to serve us. All these souls are jumping in to help us. And they're all part of the plan for we ever born. If we can entertain the idea, we don't have to accept it, but just set it up there somewhere and, and let it curate. The idea that we're divine co-creators in our life and, and sort of sit in a space of surrender, that there's a bigger plan and that we were a part of that bigger plan. We just forgot it. Then the things that need to show up kind of start showing up for us. The divine co-creators that are here to help us start showing up for us. People like you and I connect. People, I mean, like people start showing up and you're just like, oh, this is so crazy. Like all these people are showing up to help me, to love me, to serve me, to lift me, whatever. If we can own that or entertain it, that's part one. The second part is that we think that our life and our plan needs to look a certain way. We think the, the man or woman we're supposed to marry is supposed to look a certain way. We have these ideas in our head of how we want it to be. And meanwhile, the universe is over here opening all these doors that are magical, but they don't look like we, what we think. And so we're like, ooh, ooh, and because we're stubborn and we want it to be our way. And the second you kind of throw up your hands and go, okay, this doesn't look anything like what I thought it would, but let me just entertain it. Let me just sit with it for a minute. You know, um, whether it's, you know, sometimes I know in our 20s, we, we kind of have friends that are all in our 20s. And then someone who's in their 30s shows up as this wise old soul in our group and we're like well that's different eh? and so we poo poo that new friendship and that was like an angel showing up to serve us or an opportunity or a side gig kind of presents itself and we're like well that doesn't really look like something but but our job is not to like roll around in it or just accept it just entertain it um because there's so many things showing up you know we're deciphering and we're curating this life experience by going okay that, that's a possibility you know, that, 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 you know, I can entertain that. I'm not going to, you know, shut the door on something the universe is bringing to me that, you know, might just look a little different than what I expected. Like, just 
stew around in it for a minute. You know, the universe is constantly sending us people and opportunities and situations and and ideas that we're sort of going. And then the curating process is obviously, does this serve my highest good? Is this kind? Is this loving? Is this necessary? Is this is, is this something that um, is high vibe? Is it a high vibe frequency? Does it feel good? And then you're always going back to that feeling in your gut. You know, you're always going back to that. Can I can I stop you here? Because you said something what relates to a lot of my clients. Mm -hmm. Because what you said you you feel it. You you it's higher frequency, mm -hmm. the Thanks. good vibes. But but mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you say you ask the, the client or the friend, and like you you know it deep down, you know it, and and. They are no, I, I'm so messed up. I, I can't feel anything. I can see. So how to clear that part? So I believe that if we are really as power, I, I believe we're really powerful creatures. I believe that I have seen too many things that are inexplainable, that are miraculous, that, I mean, I could sit here and think about, you know, I mean, just we're all connected. I could sit here and think about my best friend. And in 15 minutes, she'll text me. I mean, everybody has the power to do that. It's happening for us all the time, right? So, you know, someone's face pops in your head and all of a sudden you're like, I just feel like I need to reach out to them. And then you reach out to them and the, you know what's hitting the fan in their life. And they're like, I'm so glad you reached out to me. But we ignore that, right? All right. What was your question again? I just get really, really excited. Oh, so <laughs> because sometimes we, we, we talk mm -hmm. to our friends or clients and they have this confusion confusing feelings on one hand they want to follow the opportunity or the person that showed up <clears> for them on the on the other side there is fear and i said you deep down when you feel it close your eyes and feel you know and you know they are usually no 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 i, I cannot feel anything i'm so mad there is so much mess so how to clear that mess <laughs> to tune in in that knowing Okay, so if we are so powerful that we can tune into all these other things, because I know we can, even if people are out there that they're just in chaos and they're like, I couldn't possibly do that. Manifesting what we want in our life is important. First of all, the first thing you do is you, you curate, you empty things out. You know, Maria Kondo talks about, um, you know, cleaning out space, things that don't serve you. Well, if we want to manifest and be connected to that intuition first we got to get rid of stuff so obviously if you want a new sofa <clears throat> you need to get rid of your old sofa and create that space but when you're creating space energetically it's like a it's like waving a flag to the universe going i'm ready for what serves my highest good i'm ready for good amazing people in my life i'm ready for prosperity i'm ready for <clears throat> all the, the blessings and great things that are available on this planet for me. Well, if you're moving out all that stuff and you're creating space emotionally, energetically, physically, mm -hmm. yeah. then that's your, your, you're shining a light on it going, I'm ready to receive. And some people that can't or don't feel like they can do that emotionally or energetically, sometimes it just means cleaning, literally cleaning out your garage, literally cleaning out your closet and giving things that you don't need to people that need it more. That energetic exchange is like waving a flag going, okay, I'm ready for what's important. I'm ready for more meaningful people, things, opportunities. And so you can start doing it by physically getting rid of crap. And then some interesting things start happening where you sort of get in this minimalistic space where you're going, what's really important, what really serves me. Then you start looking around at the people around you. Oh, sorry. I don't know what that was. Um, then you start looking at the people around you and going, why are you even in my life? Like, really, why are you in my life? Are you in my life as an energy sucker, as an energetic vampire? Are you in my life because you're only sort of showing up during the fun times? So you're my fair weather friend. Are you, you know, what is this relationship? Like you start getting down to the nitty gritty. And as you're evolving, you start and your frequency gets higher because you're like, you're operating from the space that's just vibrating it's just 
positive energy. It's just this sense of awareness. It's this honoring of your sacred space. Like that's what you're doing. And it's like this big happy bubble and you're honoring it. So now all of a sudden these people that are in your life, you're uncomfortable around. Well, why are you uncomfortable around them? Because they're not good people or they're not good for you in this you know, season of your life. They no longer serve you. They're no longer operating at this high frequency. They're, they're draining, they're energy, energy suckers. They're, they're negative. They're only showing up when it's fun. You know, they're not bringing you chicken soup when you have the flu. Like, so these other people start showing up and you're like, whoa. And then it's like, <laughs> like, like I literally, I, you know, um, was a little under the weather a week or two ago. And I had a friend bring me broth, like beef broth. She had like boiled you know, bones for like 16 hours and brought me over yeah. beef broth and like celery juice. And I'm like, I'm like, this gal like just sort of showed up. And I'm like, that's like the lottery. That's like a human that you're like, wow, like you're in this sacred space with me. We're in this together, girl. Like you feel honored to have these connections and these relationships. Well, hello, those people can't show up if you're filling your space with crappy low vibe people. There's no room. Absolutely. Absolutely. People, and they don't want anything to do with you. The good, good high vibe people. They're like, ooh. So but you, you want, it. but you won't know that until you get there to this. Mm -hmm. When you grow, when you invest in your mm -hmm. yes, yes, say and, it. I see. Yeah, and this is the crazy part. There's this space in this whole process that it sounds all like, ooh, it's all woo-woo. No, there's this space in it between cleaning out your junk and finding these good amazing humans and opportunities in your life the space in between is lonely it's hard you will question like gosh i'm so, i feel so alone i got rid of all these crappy people in my life and so now what so now you're looking at yourself now you're working on your stuff but but there's this gap of time where it just you wonder if you're doing the right thing you want to call those you know fair weather friends because you you're lonely but you can't don't do it. Yeah. It is not worth it. Like if you feel lonely, good, you're on track. If you're looking around going, I feel, I feel alone and I have no friends and good, good work on this. And then the universe is going to see that and go, Oh, you're ready. You're not screwing around. Right. You're serious. But you know, I have to say from my own experience, uh, when I came to United States, I had a couple of Polish friends because you know you you drag yourself and you want to be with people who you think you know you they speak your language and you think that they are wonderful and they want only this good stuff for you and then you discover that oh my gosh like what when it just happened because I was growing and growing and got to this higher frequency this relationship that just stopped the stop like I was like Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, what happened? And I don't miss it. I realized that it was uh, actually waving me down when they were in my life. Mm -hmm. So I, it's shocking, but like it's from my experience. Yeah, you are happier. You don't miss that. It's mm -hmm. natural. Is it how is it happening? Mm -hmm. Well, you almost want to be like, hey, hang in there. <laughs> hang in there, everybody. <laughs> like you, you got rid of all these low vibe, crappy people in your life. You know, maybe you've left a job where you thought everybody there was your friend, but they really weren't because when you left your job, they all disappeared. And now you're in this quiet space, kind of looking around, feeling, you know, feeling abandoned or feeling lonely or, or, you know, missing the comfort of mediocrity. You know what I mean? You're like, you, you knew what to expect. You, you, you knew you could guarantee, you were guaranteed that at least those people in, in their crappy low vibe energy, at least they keep showing up, you know, at least you weren't alone. <laughs> But, but I'm here to tell you there's right. worse things than being alone. And I yeah. can imagine for you it was really, really hard because you're moving to the States. Yeah. And then you're like, huh. Hmm. Yeah. It, and when you lonely. feel when you, yeah, it's all new and you feel lonely and you might attract all this crappy people or jobs or whatever. But then please wake up and you know, look at where I, am I. And like you said, the does this. Uh, serve my highest de uh, desires does it serve like why I i'm so not happy when maybe i'm with around them maybe it's just about gossiping yes yeah. and you think it's normal you think right. all these people are normal 
And then all of a sudden you start operating from this high vibe, high frequency, really serving yourself, really loving yourself madly, really recognizing the fact that this is sacred space. And I'm sorry to tell you all, but on your deathbed, where are these people going to be? They're probably not going to be anywhere around because mm -hmm. that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I I mean, I'm sure that on the way you needed them many times and they did not show up. So mm -hmm. think about that. But so I'm going to move with the next question. But in the meantime, I see your friend Lisa Winston is with us. Oh, I, see, I have to connect you too. I have to connect I you too. listen. I, I kind of went behind your back and connected because I listened to your uh, show, your interview. and. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I need to be connected with this person. We have Nancy, Roy, and my sister, Marta from Poland. Love you, sister. And it's funny because we are going to go to this Lift a Sister Up question. Tell us about that. Our topic today is a Lift a Sister Up. How this idea was born? So and tell us about it. Well, what it's is interesting because it? we're talking about curating your life and manifesting amazing things and how you have to get rid of stuff to, to open up your heart for the good stuff to show up. Um, you get, There's Lisa. I love her. Um, so basically, you're emptying out space to bring good stuff in, right? Well, when I was working in the corporate world, great job, six-figure income, learning tons, workaholic. I had all these you know, women that I worked with, and I really thought they were my friends. And when I lost my job, they disappeared like like crickets and i was like what i thought we were and i i had you know several of the women i worked with i had really shown up for um above and beyond what a boss should really do and um what i figured out after you know leaving my corporate job and being in that very lonely space was that um those people were really just putting up with me <laughs> <laughs> they they weren't my soul sisters. You know what I mean? They were in a season of my life and they were showing up as my teachers, you know, showing up to teach me things about myself, yada, yada. But when I lost that opportunity and I was in that lonely space, I learned a lot. One of the things I learned was you have to be the thing that you want to attract in your life. And so female friendships for me were always a little bit challenging. Um, I'm love. I'm seeing all these people pop up on lift a sister yeah. up, and I'm like, Anna Major, yeah. Robert, Lindsay, so And here is the here is Thank also you. the the link for your for the group. Thank lift you. The Thank sister you. Up. Yeah. So, so I, I, we will talk about that. Yeah. So I really dug in and decided. Okay. Well, it's just me. <laughs> I got nobody. It's just me. All my girlfriends have like sort of vanished. Um, I had a handful. I'm not saying every single one, but a handful that. Um, you know, I've had a best friend for 30 years. I mean, I've some good people, no doubt. But what I realized in that quiet space was, okay, now I got to work on me. I got to be that person that I want to attract. And, and that's what I did. I dug in my heels. And that's, and then that's part of the reason I created Lift the Sister Up. I was like, well, you know, a big thing for us is creating a safe space to be authentic and raw and real and giving women a safe place to land. And that rawness of we're all a hot mess. None of us know what the hell we're doing. And the least we can do is show up and cheer each other on in our batshit crazy dreams. The crazier they are, the better. Supporting other women in business, supporting other women in relationship changes, supporting other women in um, their friendships and their adventures and all of these things that I craved and I wanted. I was like, okay, I'm going to do that for other women. And so I created Lift the Sister Up and started doing that for complete strangers. Mm. And these amazing people started showing, I mean, amazing goddess women started showing up in my life that I think literally like, I mean, like Lisa Winston, like won the lottery. Amazing <laughs> human, right? Yes. Um, I, and I, there's so many of them. But when women are like, gosh, women are really nasty to each other. Women can really be assholes to each other. Yeah, they can. They but can. there's some part of you that's attracting it. So what is it? So for me, I, when I was working in the corporate world, it was my fault. It was all on me. I was showing up for these women with an attachment, with an expectation mm -hmm. That I would show up for this gal in a domestic situation. She she leaves this domestic situation, moves into a one bedroom apartment. I'm going to help her 
get a bed donated and all this great stuff. And, and within two weeks, she had like a almost fully furnished kitchen supplies, everything, one bedroom apartment, right? And I think I'm being this good human because I'm just showing up. No, I was showing up like that going, I want people to think I'm a good person. Mm. I want this person to really feel kind of indebted to me and, and go tell everybody how great I am. I mean, that's ugly. And that's what I was doing. And so when I dug down and I really examined myself, I was like, wow, that's not really doing it for the right reasons. I mean, there's some nastiness in there when we're kind. There's some nastiness in there in these dirty little threads of attachment. And that's what I was doing. So then I was like, okay, we'll lift a sister up. It's just throwing it out there. Whoever needs it, whatever sticks, sticks. I'm not attached to it. And it doesn't make, it's not this fulfilling part of my existence. I just got to do it because it's the right thing and it's necessary and I needed it and someone else might need it. And then whatever happens, whatever the universe brings back to me and blesses me with and amazing people show up, great. But if they don't, it doesn't make a difference because I still got to do the work for the right reasons. Wow, that is so deep. Uh, I want to highlight it, what you said, that you, you notice that you are not the person who you would like to attract. So to be there, to attract people that you want to have around you, first you have to become that person. So the question is who you want to be today and what you need to be that person. That is beautiful. So my next question basically is related also to what you just said about support we support women we say we support each other but there is a lot of competition so how do i support my soul sister my brother my family right now in a meaningful human and relevant way so i think that when we can put aside what we need listen to our gut and not, you know what, I'll just get to it. There's a book I read. Um, the reason I read it is Joe Vitale wrote the foreword and I love Joe. Um, he's such an exceptional human being and I, he shows up for the right reasons. He's, he, I just can't say enough about the guy. He's just a good man. He wrote the foreword of this book. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have read it. Um, but that's why I did. And I've recommended this book to like a hundred people since then, but it's called the courage to be disliked. So when we show up and we have the courage to be disliked, it means that we're showing up because it's the right reason. We might look crazy, we might sound crazy. People might judge why we're doing it. Maybe they think we want something out of it. You have to take all that and just throw it out the window and show up having the courage to be disliked and showing up because it's the right reason. So say for example, that you have a girlfriend, you're not really close friends, but you wake up first thing in the morning at 7 a.m. Mayada and her face pops in your head. And maybe she's not like an exceptional human. Maybe she's not someone that really is ready for, for you. And you're, you know, I call it the Joe juice. Like you ain't ready for the Joe juice. You may not be in my sacred space, but you're kind of out here and I see you and your okay. face keeps popping in my head. Well, for me, in my experience, I find that I need to send that person a message and say, hey, I'm just sending you some love and encouragement today. I woke up thinking about you. I have no idea why. I hope you're well. I'm holding you in the light. I, I'm, you know, you're in my thoughts and I hope it's because things are going great for you. But if you're having a hard time, I just wanted to send you some encouragement. And then you let it go. You know, it's like write it down, set it on fire and let it go. That's how you show up for others. And it starts with these tiny little acts of showing up for the right reason cutting attachment to the end result, cutting, cutting off anything that, you know, you might look silly or you might look brilliant, or you might look when you're in the middle space and that, you know, that pendulum swings where we really, really care what other people think. And then we're really like, screw them. We don't care what they think. <laughs> that middle spot where you are not affected at all by anyone else's influence. You're not affected by their res response to you showing up. You're just in that solid even Steven space of non-reactivity and you're just in this present place of love. You're seeing things coming and going in your life like dinner and a show, but you're doing you. You're showing up in spirit. You're showing up in kindness. You're showing up in love. You're showing up in a way that your soul can be proud of. And then you just let it go. That's your goal. 
but that's how you serve others. She's not attached. I think it's the hardest part to let go and lose the leaving the attachments and it's in every area of our mm -hmm. lives. Yeah, we, we hate the jobs that we do, but when we fire, oh, I loved my job, actually. I want to, what? No, you, I hear you complaining every single day. <laughs> And you see that all the time because you're because you're coaching people. So <laughs> yeah. you're like, are you yeah. crazy? Like you're really watching it going. Right. But like you're writing a story, and then you know when something you, you get laid off or let go or fired from your job. Oh, I love that job. So oh well, now we're writing a new story. So I think the space that's amazing is when you get to a spot where you stop writing effing stories. You're not writing stories. You're in this space and it's this ebb and flow and you're just allowing and you're accepting and you're staying open and you're showing up in the right space in your heart, not attached. Then as the stuff comes and goes, you're like, oh, that's life happening. I mean, mm -hmm. life, life isn't even happening to us. I don't even know if it's happening for us. It's just happening. <laughs> and, and, and acceptance is the hardest part. That it's the yeah. fact, it's what is happening. The COVID, the relationships that show up and ends, it's just the fact, but the adjusting what I call and accepting and taking the next step towards what is better and probably more abundance right. is waiting for you there is scary. But that's why you have people like Joe and me and the sister, lift the sister up community and where did i look? oh yeah okay. here is here is the <laughs> website for i mean the facebook group please go and check i have like thousand other questions to you <laughs> but I, we have to wrap it up so i officially ask you to let's call it part one and let's schedule the next part two and I would like to talk about the big mess to uh, big magic in the second part with you. Is that okay? That is awesome. I, you know, it, it, the whole thing about this coursework that that we do, it's so similar to what you do, and so similar to what all these other goddess amazing women that have showed up in my life do. Um, it's just a different flavor, but because I honestly believe that we're all a big mess but we all have this ability to tap into our intuition and all the clairs and um, all these gifts that are, that are in us. Like we show up with all these amazing intuitive gifts. And so I love the coursework because it takes people through a space where they can tap into all those superpowers that I have. Like, like I have them, you have them, everybody has them. It's just that, that we're all, I call it spiritually constipated, which sounds so gross and bizarre, but I really, it's just that gross and bizarre. It's just, you know, we're all plugged up and we're stuck in these areas of our life and we can't tap into our internal compass and that guidance because, um, you know, we're just all up in our head. So I right. love moving people into that heart space, which is so similar to what you do in your coaching, which is getting people to a space that they can listen to their gut and all these, um, you know, things that are nudging and, and whispering and guiding them through their life to, to have a better life. It's really not rocket science. It's really simple. We just make it so freaking complicated. We do. Yeah. And I, I'm so happy that you are in my life right now because I'm learning even more how to lead my people to this secret and sacred space that they have within them and from where they can grow. So... What was your last, maybe quote, maybe your favorite quote, or maybe some sentence that you want to leave our audience with that would lift them up and encourage to start investing in themselves, in their own growth? So I, I would say this, a lot of us, a lot of people are out there right now, especially with um, things that are going on in the world, they're feeling very isolated or very overwhelmed, or the future is very, um, it's this unknown space. And I was talking to, to my friend the other day, Lisa, it's talking about how bewilderment is like this hard place for us to be because we like certainty. Um, 
But I would say this, the people that I've met in my life that have been through some really hard stuff that are right now sitting at home, going through some really hard stuff, tomorrow is uncertain. They're looking at bills, they're looking at relationships, they're looking at their health or, or friends and family that are that are struggling. They're just in this overwhelmed, anxious space. So they're just like rattling. You know, that feeling like you're, you're, your body's just rattling with uncertainty and fear and anxiety. Anxiety is a real thing, right? So I really think it's super important that those individuals understand this one thing. If you've been through some crap in your life, if you've been through some hard stuff in your life, if right now you're going through stuff that you can't hardly breathe because the world is just coming at you, you're so overwhelmed and you're so anxious. If you're going through all that, it's because your soul is a badass. It's not because some awful things are happening to you. It's because your soul is like, okay, let's move through this crap. Let's move through this crap so we can get to this higher state of awareness and consciousness and, and, and feel a quietness in our heart again. And everybody, it, we forget that when we go through these really, really hard things, that on the other side of that is this sort of sense of awareness and light, airy feeling and, and sense of pride. Like, oh man, I went through some crap. But we forget the crap we went through because now we got new crap that we're going right. through. So as you're going through this feeling of uncertainty and feeling overwhelmed, just, you know, my little voice, I hope you're hearing this. If you're going through tough stuff, if you've been through tough stuff, it's because your soul's a rock star. It's because your soul's a badass. This life for you isn't all dreamy, airy, smooth, easy, breezy because you're different. Because you're because your your soul's meant for bigger, better things. And think about this, take it a step further. Maybe the crap you're going through isn't even about you. Maybe it's what you need to do so you can show up for other people on the other side of it and go, look, I survived. And you can show up and inspire them. Um, I know for me, things I've been through in my life, my saving grace was recognizing that, okay, maybe this this horrible thing I'm in the middle of, <laughs> I can't hardly breathe, this horrible thing I'm in the middle of. Maybe it's not about me. Maybe I got to survive this shit fest <laughs> so that I can get on the other side of it and I can tell other women, hey, you're going to be okay. Your soul's a rock star. You're going to be better than okay. And and I had this experience and I'm going to tell you how I did it and I'm going to show up for you and I hope it you know, softens your soul a little bit and allows you to let go and move on. I love it. Oh my gosh. I want like, I want to go so inspiring and motivating. I just want to go, go and do it. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for uh, your kind and beautiful wisdom. Um, so my last question is how our audience can find you except the Facebook and Instagram where you are. Is there any other place that so people we're can get to know you? I know, right? We're currently, I, I'm so like, you know, it's funny to me, all of my clients have been referrals. So I haven't had to like hustle. I haven't had to really like advertise. I haven't had to, you know, put myself really out there, which is such a blessing. Um, but I am moving over to like an actual website um, where people can link up with me and people can read my articles and people can connect with me for sessions or for my Big Mess to Big Magic course, which is a rolling course. So when you see it on the events, it's not that it starts and stops during a certain date. It's constantly going because new clients are constantly picking up from week to week. So it's 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 a rolling course. It's not actually a set with date course. Um, but yeah, eventually um, we'll we'll get my website wrapped up. But for now, just Facebook's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, like I said, all my clients have been referrals, so I, I think that says a lot. Um, it, it, yeah, but I'm gonna be like legit. <laughs> yes, and and your Facebook and Instagram, wherever you go, it's it's a lot. Like to go through all information and knowledge and the wisdom that she's sharing there, to go through all of them and the interviews, like with your friend Lisa, you will spend days, like you know, listening. Like, oh my gosh, that is so wonderful. Why I didn't get here before? Because it was not aligned, but now it's aligned. Mm -hmm. You have her website, uh, not website, I'm sorry, Facebook page <laughs> right up front of us. Website is coming. And again, this is 
part one and in part two we will talk about big mess to big magic one of the greatest product that joe is offering and yes many of you can right now be in a big mess but remember <laughs> when the, after that there is a big magic then can be yes it, mm -hmm. it sometimes takes a long time it, it took for mm -hmm. me i was in the darkness for so long and i almost give up that thinking that there is a light but then it's like oh my gosh this light is so bright i love it <laughs> yeah you think it's normal yeah. you think that's yeah. normal it's not normal right nope nope and yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everyone who is listening to us today, thank you so much. Please go and connect with Josh. It's wonderful. Find her. And it's not really difficult. Just Facebook is right there for you. And ask her questions. Get to know her and get to know me. What do you want me to, or who you want me to bring? Who else you want me to bring to this show? Or what el what other topics or subjects you would like me to talk about? Please share, like, and uh, because you know you never know who needs to hear that message today. You never know. So, everyone, thank you so much for being here with us, Joe. You especially for being here and sharing. This is very. I'm very thankful. It, this is a gift that you just gifted me with. So thank you again. <laughs> thank you. And have a wonderful day, everyone.